In this Starship update, the first full Starship Super Heavy rocket is stacked, ground is broken on a new high bay, booster 3 is scrapped, and the Starship Quick Disconnect arm is installed on the tower. Hi everyone, I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, here to give you an overview of the SpaceX Boca Chica facilities as of late August 2021. To call the last few weeks eventful would be quite the understatement. The star, or rather the stars, of the show were without a doubt Booster 4 and Ship 20. These two vehicles are intended to fly on the first orbital test flight of Starship, scheduled for later this year. Both vehicles completed assembly at the beginning of this month. Booster 4 was finished on August 1st, and it sports four large grid fins. These fins are so large that they couldn't be cast as one single piece, like those on the Falcon 9. Instead, there are several cut pieces of steel that were welded together. The fins will be driven by modified Tesla Model 3 motors. Interestingly, the fins will remain deployed during the entire flight, as they don't make much drag anyway. Also, SpaceX demonstrated a rapid engine installation on Booster 4. On August 2nd, all 29 of its Raptor engines were installed overnight. Previously, a single Raptor installation by itself was an overnight task. This speed was likely caused both by SpaceX getting more used to working with Raptor, as well as the engine only being installed for fit checks. To ensure that Ship 20 and Booster 4 would connect properly on the pad, SpaceX chose to perform a fit check of the two vehicles at the orbital launch site in early August. Booster 4 was rolled to the launch site on August 3rd. After a few delays due to weather, it was lifted onto the launch mount the following day. This marked the first time that a booster was installed on the orbital launch mount, which itself was actually still under construction at that point. Ship 20 was then moved to the launch site on August 5th. Sporting a near-complete array of heat shield tiles, three sea-level Raptor engines, and three Raptor vacuum engines. Raptor vacuum engines were never installed on a Starship before this, so it was another big milestone. History was made on August 6th, when Ship 20 was stacked atop Booster 4. This marked the first time that a full Starship Super Heavy vehicle was stacked, a rocket that will someday carry humans to the moon, Mars, and beyond. And I'll admit, I teared up. After an hour of checkouts and photo shoots, Ship 20 was lowered back to the ground and rolled back to the production site for final work. Booster 4 remained at the pad for an extra few days before it too was moved back to the production site on August 11th. The engines on both vehicles were removed and some were shipped out of Boca Chica to finish testing at the McGregor test site. Ship 20 was later brought back to the launch site and lifted onto suborbital pad B on August 17th to conduct pre-flight testing. This will likely include cryogenic proofing, where it will be filled with liquid nitrogen and pressurized to ensure the strength of its tanks. Then, at least its three sea-level Raptor engines will be installed for a static fire test. As of recording, no major testing has been performed on Ship 20 yet. Also, there are no road closures scheduled for any time soon, so we may be in for a bit of a wait. Just next door on Pad A, Booster 3 is in the process of being scrapped, following a successful test program in July. The top half of Booster 3 was cut off on August 14th, and then sliced into smaller pieces. As of recording, the bottom half of Booster 3 still resides on Pad A. Work continues on the orbital launch mount, where Booster 4 and Ship 20 will soon be stacked again. A quick disconnect umbilical was installed on the mount, which will load propellants into future Super Heavy boosters. The orbital launch site tank farm was expanded as well. In fact, Tank 3 actually photobombed the Ship 20 Booster 4 stacking as it was placed onto its concrete pedestal. GSC Tank 4, which was assumed months ago to have been scrapped, has reappeared and was stacked on August 20th. However, it was reincarnated as a subscale test tank, 
likely to test the design of the new GSE tanks. GSE Tank 4 was then rolled to the launch site on August 23rd, and completed a cryogenic proof test two days later. Its future purpose is currently unknown. The launch tower at the orbital launch site was topped off on July 28th, and is currently being fitted out. Insulated pipes are being installed, which will load propellants into starships on the pad. Nearby, the Starship Quick Disconnect arm was prepared for lifting and installation on the tower, which just happened on August 29th. This is a structure that will load propellants from the tower into Starship, and then quickly rotate away from the vehicle at liftoff. The two catch arms, which as their name suggests will catch landing super heavy boosters, are making progress as well. These two arms will eventually be mounted onto the launch tower, similar to the quick disconnect arm. Back at the production site, ground has been broken, quite literally, for a new, wider high bay. The new building will be located just north of the existing high bay, and will be a little bit taller. Its main feature will be that it's much wider to support simultaneous construction of several starships and boosters. We're probably a while out from it being ready to assemble vehicles, but once completed, it will help speed up operations at the site. On August 28th, the crew of Inspiration4, the first all-civilian space flight, performed a training flight over the Boca Chica facilities. Flying in two Dassault Dornier Alpha Jets and two Czech Aero L-39s, the team enjoyed beautiful views of Starbase just three weeks ahead of their launch aboard a Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Finally, two new potential prototype designs have been spotted. Firstly, a new nose cone has been spotted. Unlike the older nose cones, which were made up of dozens of formed panels, this design uses a much smaller amount of larger panels, giving a smoother appearance. This will improve production time as far fewer welds will be needed. The second new design spotted was a four-ring barrel section made of 3.6mm steel. All other Starship prototypes until now, except for SN7.2, were made of 4mm steel. And that's it for this video. If you'd like to support the channel, consider subscribing and becoming a channel member, with several cool perks available for our channel members. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.